Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our 2022 Complete Beginner's Guide to Darkest Dungeon. We're in week two. We survived with our team, and now uh, we have a few more facilities open in our hamlet. We got access to the tavern and the abbey, which are both, as you see, labeled for stress relief. So now that it's week two, the first thing that we want to do is click on uh, the stagecoach. Now, by the way, the Butcher's Circus is blinking at us with its exclamation point. You can click on this to clear it off, but um, I'm never going to do the Butcher's Circus. It's uh, a multiplayer thing, and it doesn't um, have any, in my opinion, or at least for the purposes of this guide, it's kind of a distraction. It will take us a field from understanding the core of the game, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, as I feel that most of the DLC stuff is good, but it's, as I said in the previous video, for further down the road. So we're going to click on the stagecoach, because what we need to do is see who has arrived in town for us to hire. And honestly, what you want to do at the beginning is just take whoever you can get. Because you can always just dismiss people. You could just fire them outright, okay? Um, and uh, let me show you actually how to do that. So if I click on my buddy here, um, in the upper left corner, there is a icon that has like a person in red with an X and an arrow, and it's like dismiss hero. So you can just kick them out. So uh, even though these are two gestures, I only have four people total. So I'm just trying to fill out my roster with whoever foolishly rides the stagecoach into town and wants to join up and be a hero. So we're just going to um, put... He will be laughing still at the end. He will be laughing. These characters on our team... Shoot, bandage, and pillage. The dancing steps of war. Amazing steps they are. So... Now the stagecoach is unloaded. Now, of course, we could click up here in the upper left and, and attempt to upgrade it, but you'll see that we're short on deeds, and we need uh, two more before we can upgrade the stagecoach network. Um, and that should be one of our priorities, getting more and more coming in. Speaking of resources, it's not as important now because we don't have a lot of um, heirlooms to mess with, but I will say, we talked about busts, portraits, deeds, and crests. These shards are a resource that we will gain um, if we do um, the farmstead. Okay, so the farmstead has opened up. As you can see, it goes here. It says the comet's impact was felt here in the hamlet. So something from space has hit down nearby, busted up the mill. The great impact toppled gravestones and kicked up a cloud of dust that covered the entire region. When it finally settled, an eerie miasma was seen to spread from the mill. It distorted the rules of time and space far beyond imagining, ventured to the miller's farm to see what has been done. So, you'll see right here, you can actually go to the farmstead. And this quest is purported to be an apprentice level quest, meaning you can do it with people who are in that level zero, you know, to two range. Um, and that's fine. Okay. But we're not going to. I'm just going to be very clear with you. If you watch my let's play of this game, I don't tackle the farmstead in earnest until uh, around episode 100. Okay. So it takes me a while to get here, and even when I do with, like, maxed out characters, uh, I found the, the boss to be challenging. So um, I'm just going to click on there just to show you that is where you get these comet shards. So this type of resource comes from the DLC. If you're playing on vanilla, you won't even see it. All right. Um, so just as a heads up there. Now I am going to go um, back to the Hamlet quickly and talk to you about some more things so what i wanted to also mention was down here on the bottom to the right of the shards you'll see this icon that has kind of two arrows 
interlocking, almost like a recycle symbol. And if you click on it, what it will let you do is exchange heirlooms for other types of heirlooms at a exchange rate um, that is generally unfavorable. Like it's never one to one. Um, sometimes, like for example, if I want to get, I could trade two busts to get three crests, um, or um, I could, and that's minimum. I could trade three busts to get one portrait. Um, I could trade three busts to get two deeds. So in fact, you know, if I wanted to trade away three busts to get two deeds so we could upgrade the stagecoach, that is something that we could do. And if you're in a pinch, totally do this. If you're like super close and you want to upgrade, that's fine. Uh, but for me, at this stage, at the beginning of the game, I don't really have enough heirlooms to make it worth it, given that exchange rate. And as you will see, once we get some more of these buildings open, they take different heirlooms to upgrade them. So even though it might seem like we have a surplus of one or the other, we're going to need them potentially for a different building type. And uh, even within that, some are more plentiful than others. Like crests, for example, um, are extremely easy to come by most of the time and are less valuable directly than some of the others. And you can also infer that by based on how many you can stack up in one pile in your inventory when you're out adventuring. So anyway, just wanted to explain these two things. But uh, the, the next thing that we need to talk about are the two new types of characters that we pulled in. So we got a jester, okay? Um, and, you know, the jesters are amazing because... What they do is they have skills that can reduce your stress. Now, they don't start with it, um, unfortunately, like this one didn't, and um, this one did. So you'll see, uh, this only matters like right in the beginning, but basically we got two jesters, but they started with different camping skills and different combat skills learned when they come in. Uh, so they're, and they also have different quirks. So when you're really, really caring about who you pick and choose, you look at the character's quirks and make sure there's nothing that's game-breaking that they have coming in. Um, like, this isn't a deal-breaker. Um, you know, this might not be a deal-breaker, uh, but either way, you also kind of want to pay attention to um, their skills and camping skills, but in reality, once you get further in the game, you're going to be able to learn all of these skills with your character, so it matters less a little bit further in. Like, for example, that this guy, uh, Poignant, didn't start with Inspiring Tune. But for now, it is significant because we can't train it just yet. Now, the Jester is both someone who can heal stress which is very very good especially early in the game it's it's like more important um for for that early in the game because later we're going to get better measures built into the hamlet to mitigate stress with a bigger roster with better stress relieving tools but still they shine throughout the entire game and stress reduction does matter later in some situations and you can get relics or trinkets, I should say, for the Jester that really amplify their ability to make that music. But the other thing that they do is a ton of damage. They put a lot of bleed on, and they can just do uh, a huge amount of damage, uh, with, especially with this finale ability. So um, don't sleep on the Jester as someone who can do a bunch of damage, is really good at dodging, and can also reduce stress. So it's a very good character uh, to, to have in our party. Additionally, we got ourselves uh, an herbalist, and she is a ranged fighter. You can see she wants to be in position three or four because she's got these abilities that will uh, blast away targets at range with DPS, like suppressing fire, which just hits the back two targets um, and debuffs them 
significantly. Like, it just it makes it so they have minus 15 accuracy and minus 15% crit. So it really, really makes it hard for them to hit you. Sniper shot is just a big amount of damage, but notice it says 50% damage versus marked. And she does have sniper's mark to mark targets. And this is when you're going to start to look into the game for building parties that synergize with each other. Because some characters really love having things marked and can apply marks and work really well together. So, for example, um, you'll see that... Um, uh, uh, Poignant has it that Solo actually um, does mark the self, okay, but not the enemy, all right? Um, and so Solo is, like, insane because it marks you, which incentivizes the enemies to hit you, but it gives you plus 20 dodge, and it increases the damage of your finale by 75% and its crit rate. So you Solo... And then you go into Finale and blast people. Now, if you've done Finale, then your dodge comes off and it's easier for them to hit you. So you really want to do this when you're about to kill them. But um, the Air Ballist is going to mark the enemy, which debuffs the target and takes dodge away from them. All right, so it makes it harder for them to dodge and you get a bonus to hit them. Now, we can look at our... Um, Plague Doctor, and she doesn't currently have any skills that mark, nor does uh, our Vestal. Uh, but Dismas, however, um, his pistol shot, you can see it gets 25% more damage versus marked. So putting Dismas and the Herbalist together is a nice combination because you're going to get bonus damage when things get marked. All right, so that's something to think about, all right? Now, our party is still gonna wanna be something to this effect in the sense that we're gonna be relying on Lady Heels a lot because she's our only hero. Vestals are characters that like, you almost can't have enough of them. They're so good at healing and they're so important for solid party composition that you're going to want a bunch of healer types. Now, unfortunately, in our stagecoach, we didn't get a healer. We got a bunch of DPS um, characters and stress healers, but not damage healers. So there's that to think about. Now, you'll see that everybody who went on a quest last week has some stress. Plague and um, the Plague Doctor has one, and our Vestal has two. I don't concern myself too significantly with stress unless they get to be about halfway through the first level of stress. If someone is about halfway filled, or more than that, of their first row of stress, I don't bring them because it's just too much stress. That's just kind of how I play, unless it's an emergency or I don't care, or I'm intentionally doing that. I, I let them rest, and I would either use the Abbey or the tavern, um, or uh, other facilities that open up later on. Now, I don't know if I've explained this yet, but it is worth mentioning. You see how she has two pips, Lady Heels, of stress right now? I'm going to go over to this, and you'll see it's stress 23, but it's of 200. What, me what that means is you fill this up once, okay? And then it can the bar can fill up again. So one time through the pips will be just a white outline, and that's 0 to 100. And then a second time through is 100 to 200. And then when they get to that 200 stress, they will die. Or go go so insane that they're lost. And when they get to 100 stress, once this fills up once, they're going to have a check. And this is a check that tests their resolve, basically. And there's a 75% chance that something negative will happen. They will get an affliction. Okay, which is like just a really bad outcome and they'll be like off their rocker and they will be doing things that disturb the party for as long as they're in the party that you need to come treat back at the hamlet. But they also have a 25% chance to have a favorable outcome and get stronger, which is amazing when that happens, like when their resolve is tested and they rise to the challenge and then they get some like really good positive buff where they're just rocking it and they will 
um, be so buffed up that they will help you out a good bit in the adventure that they have that buff. So that's a little bit about stress, and long story short, she does have two pips of stress, but I'm still comfortable taking her. But if this was a little bit higher, like if she had four, I might not want to take her. And the reason being, you think, well, she's got a whole bunch of stress to work with. Why are you going to not take her if she's got, you know, um, 50 out of 100 stress or something or more? It's because, like I was talking about last time, the AI will immediately see that that person is unnerved, is stressed out, and any enemy that can do stress damage will have a huge chance of targeting that character and it will just snowball out of control. That's one of the things that makes the game difficult. If somebody is hurt, they will focus fire on that target. If somebody is stress impaired, they will focus fire with stress attacks on that target. So even though it might seem like it's not that big of a deal, it can get out of control really quickly. Now, if you have a jester or you have some other ways to mitigate stress, you know you're going to be camping, maybe then you can deal with that. Uh, but for now, we're going to do this. So it's very possible in the early game, if you don't have another healer, you might have to do some delving without a healer in your party. And it's totally doable to not have a healer. It's just riskier and you need to be aware of that. And what I would recommend is trying to do something easy, take powerful people, do a short mission um, that you can get out of just by eating some food to heal. But for now, we're good. So the question is, do I want to swap anybody in and out of this party? And um, for the purposes of fun and education, I'm going to do just that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put my Vestal... Um, I'm going to go to the Embark screen and mess around with this. I'll show you. This is the usual suspects. I'm going to actually put in the Herbalist in the fourth slot, and I'm going to put my Vestal in the third slot just like that. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to play around with Mark and Dismiss and see if we can get this synergy to uh, either be showcased or be not as impactful as we want it to be. A lot of the combo wombos that you can make in terms of party composition will begin to emerge later in the game when you have more skills unlocked and more characters unlocked and more trinkets so you can really customize and like double down on some synergies but for now we can still see it so again we could do the farmstead but we're not going to we could do the darkest dungeon but we're sure not going to and we could click on the courtyard and we are not going to. We're going back into the ruins. Now notice that the ruins now has a one underneath it. And this is all about progress toward the boss and what boss we're on. So right now we're kind of like at ruins one. And as we progress and as we move up and fight the boss, um, this number will start to increase. Now here's our options. We could, unlike last time, we have way more options and this is where the game starts to get fun and you get more choices and you need to make better decisions so we could do um, these are all by the way green they're all apprentice level quests which of course we're apprentices you know we're we're level zero and one so we need that and here's our options we could do a skirmish which is room battles you got to do them all we could do an exploration, a scouting mission, 90% of rooms. We could do another room battle, and we could do another scout. So we have two scouts, two room battles. They're all the same, um, except for the rewards. So at this point, we're going to start taking a look at the rewards that are available to make this decision. Now, in my opinion... Um, both of these quests are fine, okay? And I'm going to just look around. I'm okay with fighting battles or exploring. So I'm going to just choose which looks the most desirable. Um, I'm looking at heirlooms. There's crest, deed, crest, bust. So my deeds are quite low. And we did say that we needed deeds for the stagecoach. 
So what you can do is like start to make decisions about where you go based on what heirlooms you need. And in fact, that's mostly what I do. I'm trying to upgrade my hamlet. So I'm looking down here to see what gives me the heirlooms that I'm looking for. Now, don't forget, even though it's going to lock in three deeds for me, we're going to get way more heirlooms than this throughout the course of the mission in treasure chests, in curios, and things like that. But just knowing that I'll get three more is very good. I only have six. So, you know, you're talking about a 50% increase. Now, additionally, there's this bag right here, which is the trinket. And you can also choose, like, if you see a trinket that's incredible, you can choose to go for it. But none of these trinkets, like, this is actually an uncommon trinket. Um, and it helps you bleed. That's okay, but none of these are, like, blowing me away. So I'm going to go with this one. Gives us 3,000. It gives us a Plague Doctor item, which makes the Plague Doctor more accurate at the expense of hit points. Remember, like I said, a lot of the trinkets are going to give you something good and something bad, and you just have to balance that. At first, for me, just psychologically, again, because so much of this game is not only about the psychology of your characters and how they manage stress, but it's honestly about how you, the player, deal with the dismal nature of the game and the stress yourself. And I used to hate this when I first started playing because I want life to be good. I only want good things. And so I didn't understand why all my equipment in this game was always got a good thing and a bad thing. Why I always had good quirks and bad quirks. I'm like, I only want the rosy side of life. I don't want this. But that's not how it works at all. And you just have to accept that. This is this game. So there's always trade-offs to be made. And that's the nature of it. So might as well accept it. Okay. Now, speaking of trinkets, though, let's open this screen. And we actually have some. So let's see if we want to equip anybody with, a, with any of these trinkets. So if I click on this, you'll notice that I have a 10% skill chance bonus and a minus one to speed and then a 15 percent move skill chance and a minus one to speed so um these aren't great plus 10 percent to stunning is is pretty reasonable if i want to be stunning a bunch so i might equip this with my vestal it's going to slow her down which is problematic if i'm counting on the heal but at the same time, it does make her stun, which is what we're relying on a lot, more potent. So we'll take it. Now, my Crusader also has a stun, but he's got more abilities that I'm doing more frequently, like um, just doing damage. Whereas sometimes the Vestal, she doesn't need to heal, and all she can do is stun, so let's go for that. Nobody in my party really is moving people around too significantly, so I'm not going to equip this. And this is only for a flagellant. So now we have all of our stuff equipped. We can't level up our gear. We can't really do much with these people right now at this point in the game. So we're just going to dive in. Here's how we go. I'm going to say, okay, we're going to the ruins. We just were there. We know what it's all about. And up here, by the way, it does tell you that we have a 25% plus 10% bonus for a total of 35% chance to scout in this adventure. So that's good. I'm going to shift click food and take a stack of 12 and um, again I splash around. I'm going to take it all. I might not need it all but I want it all. I'm going to take at least two shovels. I'll take two. That should be okay. And then I'm going to take two keys and then we're going to shift click torches. Boom, boom. Um, and I think two stacks is fine. That's fine. So I'm going to take these supplies. I'm not going to pile up and take anything else because I'm okay with what I've got. And I'm going to click embark. You see again, you're going to be just bleeding money for supplies at the beginning of the game. And that's just a reality. But eventually, our cash will start to build up. Especially once we construct some buildings that help our cash flow in the hamlet that we can't get to until we start defeating some bosses. 
There's actually only one, and it's called the bank, but it's incredibly helpful. All right. Things must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? So now they're telling us about the hero panel to right-click on an image or portrait at any time to bring up a detailed panel showing the hero's quirks, skills, and resistances. And this is true. You can. You can just right-click on Reynold. Just You can right-click on, like, them right here, um, or you can right-click on their little icon down there on the panel either way and get that screen. But I, I will say it is important to note, just in case, you see how our Vestal has a trinket equipped? You can actually drag this off and put it in your inventory or give it to somebody else if you want and exchange trinkets. So if you find a trinket in the dungeon and it goes into your inventory, you can equip it in the dungeon and do that. Also, if you right click on your character and you look at the skills, when you're not in combat in the dungeon, you can turn on and off skills to enable them when you want. Like if you want a particular skill and you don't need another, you can switch them on and off. I can't do that now because these are all locked. I haven't learned them yet. But later, you can start to change your loadout and you can do that even within the dungeon. You don't have to be at the hamlet. All right, so that's um, something important to know. All right, and we need to get 100% of room battles and there's not that many rooms. So what we really want to do is spike a scout. That would be so helpful. I mean, it's always helpful, but... Yep, because look, because we didn't scout right away, we found a trap. Remember I said traps are invisible to you unless you scout it, so you just are going to get hit by it. It's random who it hits. So it just picked somebody, it, it affected them, and mercifully, Reynold dodged it. How? I don't know. I'm not asking. And we found a curio, and this is a bag. And remember, this is one of the curios that we can always open without fear of reprisal, and we got 500 gold. That's terrific. All right, and right about here, you can see our torch burning out. I'm just going to push the is torch. Clear. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. And we want it to light before it goes down so that nobody suffers any negative stress before it goes below 75. And this is a free room. And now we've scouted, and we see that we're going to have to go both ways because there's a room battle with the curio here, and there's a room battle with the treasure here. And we need to get, we have to do 100% of battles to complete this skirmish quest. So we're going to need to do both of these, and that's fine. I'm going to go this way first because there's a battle here, and I want to do it while i am got all my supplies, and I'm at fuller strength, and I'm ready to rock. Now, I said this is a free room. It's free for me. It's not free for this poor guy who's on the rack right there. So I'm going to click this room, and we're going to go north. We're going to have a battle immediately. And here it is. Okay. And this is actually a really easy battle. These are maggots. Now, maggots, we don't know anything about them because this is our first time encountering them. But I had mentioned in a previous video, they do not leave corpses behind. Um, and they're very, very low hit points. They dodge a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean not at all. Um, they are very resistant to stun, though. So... What are we going to do? I'm going to Grape Shot Blast. The reason I did that, okay, is because it's AoE. It hit all three of them. And remember, Reynold has an AoE that can hit the first two targets. And then our Air Ballist, she's back here with her awesome crossbow, is going to blast away at this third target, all right? So I'm just going to Sniper Shot this one. Back to the pit. And she blows it away. And you can see, somehow she came in with a little stress. I think everybody just gets stressed when they arrive at your hamlet and they see what a terrible mistake they've made. Um, but anyway, we're going to zealous accusation and Another clean up the whole mess. Cleansed from our lands. So that's a very easy battle for us. And it's one of those things where it's like showcasing the power of full torchlight so that you get that surprise round. They didn't even get to act. It's beautiful. We lost nothing. We used no resources. By the way, as I continue to just pile on the information, one thing to think about, this is an RPG, and it's a party-based RPG, and so you might be thinking, you know Final Fantasy, Dragon Warrior, whatever. And when I get in that mindset, I think about magic points as a resource to hoard. 
your characters can use their abilities indefinitely um, as long as they're in battle. So, for example, the Vestal's Heal takes nothing to do. You can heal and heal and heal for as long as you like. So do it freely. Don't. There is no magic point resource for skills or anything like that. Some abilities will take your hit points or something like that, and it'll tell you. But other than that, you just get to use it. There's no stamina. There's nothing like that. It's just use it. All right, here's a curio. Now, this curio, um, I'm going to light the torch before it goes down, is, is one that we're never going to interact with. So this is the locked display cabinet. Now, it's locked, okay? So I could use a key on it and open it, but I'm not going to use anything on this. Um, and the reason is I want to use my key for chests because I value chests more than this. But if at the end of the adventure... I still have a key left. Let's say I find another one, or I still have one. I could come back and get this. One thing I want to tell you is that you can leave curios behind, and they don't despawn. You can come back and get them later. And a powerful strategy that some have is, like you saw before, I turned off my torch and then opened a chest at the end of the last mission. You can turn off your torch and come back and clean up these curios and try to get bonus rewards if you wish. Um, that That's something that people, you could do. And so I'm not going to get this. The reason I'm not going to get this is some curios just, you know, maybe they have a 50-50 chance of a good thing or a bad thing. And you can wiki these to, like, figure out exactly what item you should use to interact with it and what the chances are and what the outcomes are if you want, if you want that kind of information. I don't really do that. I kind of do it by trial and error. But some of them I know, and I'm just telling you, that, like, just ignore it unless you're feeling really frisky. And I'm not. And we'll go through and we'll get a bag. And what do we get? Wealth beyond a little money. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Okay. And now, um, I am okay with going into this next room with my torch at 82. By the way, another thing I'll tell you is, and I think I already mentioned this, you can light a torch. Um, ouch, she got hit for stress big time. And this is why these guys are so rough. We did not surprise them. They're getting to act first. And you can see these guys are doing a ton of stress damage. So we want to take them out as fast as possible. You can light a torch in combat and it does not take your turn. All right. So I'm going to try and just annihilate these guys in the back. So I'm going to shoot this dude in the back. And then... Um, I could suppress. How many hit points do you have? Two? What's your damage? Three to seven, minus 80%. Let's see how much damage we do with this. Zero. They dodged. Embarrassing. All right, so we're going to Dazzling Light this dude. We should stun him easily. We did. Ow. Half her health in one shot. Right, that's unfortunate. Okay, so what we're going to do now is... Uh, I'm just going to smite because these are undead. So we get a bonus. So let's take him down. Now we um, killed him in one shot. He's gone. Please, yes, attack Reynold. All right. That guy doesn't get to act. He's stunned. You can see, look, this is, this is Darkest Dungeon. This guy, we missed him. And because we missed him... Um, he got to put another stress. He targeted the person that was already targeted. She's already now at 58 out of 200 stress. I mean, this is how quickly this has gone. They got to act before us. They're very fast. They have speed 8. And that's why you don't want to mess around with these dudes. And you want to try to get them as fast as possible. Okay. So, um, I'm going to try to... Actually, you know what? I need to heal. Uh, I'm going to heal the Vestal so she doesn't get killed. And good, he's going to attack Reynold. That's fine. Reynold is good at taking damage. And then I'm just going to sniper shot. Boy, we still couldn't kill that guy, huh? That's such a shame. I'm going to stun this guy. Man, man getting owned. This is Darkest Dungeon. 
And this is why the game is hard. She's about to have a stress meltdown already. We're like one battle, two battles. No way, this is actually a third battle. Third battle into this. But these guys, you can see they do not spread it around. They're focusing and they get to go so fast. And I, you know, you needed to do that damage last round and kill him, but we didn't. And so here we are. All right, so we're going to have to be really careful with that character. Now we're also... Let's see. Oh, okay. I'll show you. Let's just take him down with Reynold. All right. So cool. So we got medicinal herbs, money, and some busts, and we just bring it all in. Now this statue right here, okay? Let's talk about this. First of all, you can see how stressed she is, and you can see that we've taken some damage. Uh, if I look at the map, I don't know if there's a fight here, but I have to go explore it. I'm going to eat some food with people and just heal up a little bit. And it's an ornate fountain of holy purport, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the experimentation process. I'm interacting with this f fountain, okay, with the herbalist, and I'm going to use holy water and see if it does anything, and it gave a divine benefit. So what that means is if you use holy water at this fountain, what it did was it healed her and it reduced her stress. Now I interacted with it with her. It healed her stress by 20 and it healed her health by 12. So sometimes the curios can be extremely powerful if you have the right item for the job. And in this case, I did. They start you with a holy water. Now, again, like I said, you kind of figure it out by trial and error. And once you've used the right item on the curio once, every time it will, if you have that item in your inventory, it will tell you that that's the right item to use. So the game keeps track of it for you, which is very friendly. It'll tell you if it has no effect as well, just so you know. Now, we're not out of the woods, but that was really helpful. I knew that would work because I've done this game before, but it's also something where it's like, just try it, you know, if you're a new player. I mean, honestly, I was getting ready to tell you guys that if this character freaks out, gets way too stressed, and then flips out and becomes, you know, like irrevocably damaged, we just drop her from the roster and forget she ever existed and recruit someone else. She's cost us nothing. We've spent no money on her. We have no investment in her. So don't worry about it. But also, if you see something like this, it's a fountain. So you can think that like holy water can purify anything that's liquid, anything that's a fountain, anything that looks particularly unholy or holy. Try a holy item on it. It's kind of intuitive, like sometimes what item works with the curio. Now, not really like spider web somehow you use bandages on them, you know, pro tip there. I don't know how that necessarily makes sense. I guess you cover your hands so they don't stick to you, but sometimes, but they usually make sense. So just try something that seems intuitively to make sense. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But in that case, we got a little benefit and we're going to go over here and explore. Now I could leave this behind. I could do all the rest of this and then um, luck out. There was no battle here. I didn't need to come here and we win and we're done. Um, but then... If not, I'm going to have to backtrack. So while I'm here, I'm just going to go this way. And we got some money. And, oh my gosh, we have a battle. But we surprised him, luckily. And we were just barely at uh, max torch. I'm going to light a torch. The light gains purchase, so let's go. Are lifted, and purpose is made clear. I'm going to grape shot blast. I'm going to stun the shooter. I'm going to... Uh, shoot this guy. Alright. Yeah, the herbalist can do some good damage when she's hitting. And good. You see what happened there also? Remember her stress was at 57 because she got a crit. She healed some stress. She feels better. So she's you know, maintaining. And I'm going to go ahead and stun this guy here. 
Just take Weather Turn. He resisted it, which is annoying, but what can you do? He's going to hit us both. Pretty good shot there. All right. So now um, I'm going to slice up the brigand. These are humans, so you can bleed them. So the Fusilier is going to die from bleeding, so that's good. Now here's something to note. Okay. When you're in combat, you can look at the enemy, and they will have... If you mouse over their health bar, it'll tell you how many actions remaining. It's indicated by this gold stripe. They have one action remaining. Bosses will get, like, two, um, but most regular enemies just get one. And so you can see who has acted and who hasn't. So because this guy hasn't acted yet, I could stun him and guarantee that he won't get to do anything. But I'm going to take a bit of a gamble and heal the party because three out of my four people are hurt. So I'm just going to heal up. Now, that was a terrible roll on the heal, so that was of dubious worth. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot shoot the first target, but I can blind fire. Um, and... I'm just going to shoot here. It's got a low chance of hitting, but we <laughs> randomly hit someone. So blind fire is like, you know, you hit somebody in their party. You're just shooting blind. And we killed the, the one that was going to die anyway. He missed. So let's just clean him out. We win. Stress off. A little bit of money. Remind yourself. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Fantastic. So in this case, uh, we're doing okay. And let's see. Here's a curio. <laughs> All right. And this is a curio that's like an alchemy table. Guess what? Ignore. No good will come of this, in my opinion. But if you're feeling frisky, please interact with that. I'm going to be honest with you, it's like 50% or more of the curios I just don't interact with because uh, I try to control as much as what I can in this game to keep my people alive and play. I play a very cautious style. That might not be for you, that's just what I do. And this room was empty, so we didn't need to go here. And so we'll walk back. Now when you walk back through places that you've explored, uh, most of the time it's cool. But sometimes, new enemies can spawn. So just be aware of that. No new traps will spawn. No new curios will spawn, at least as far as I know. But enemies can sometimes respawn in the hallway, even if it's been cleared before. In radiance, may we find victory. All right, so now we're going to go to this room battle over here. And we have a hunger check, which is actually good for us, because we can't camp. But this is a way for us to just kind of heal everybody up a little bit. And, okay, this is another curio that I never mess with. This would be an Iron Maiden. And, you know, no thank you. I mean, it it doesn't look good. Oh, I forgot to light the torch. There we go. They told me about it. All right, so here's a trap. And we're going to disarm it with... Um, unfortunately, she's terrible at disarming traps. She only has a 50% chance. So we're going to do it with Dismiss. Oh, and even though his he had a 90% chance, um, he lost, he rolled badly, He um, so we got the 1 out of 10 there, and you can see he took damage, and he took stress damage, so that's why traps are a nightmare. Okay, and here comes a battle. Our torch is good, we're ready. Sweet. Alright, oh good, this is what you want. Can you imagine how much easier that previous battle would have been on our stress if we would have surprised them and been able to take out the courtier immediately anyway woulda shoulda coulda we didn't we didn't get it that's the reality all right so i'm gonna pile on he dodged i'm gonna stun the herbalist or and uh we got him and then we're gonna try to shoot him we got him but not for enough damage and I'm going to stun... Uh, actually, I'm just going to swing at the Bone Soldier. We can take him out in one shot because Reynolds is just so good against the undead. Yep. And again, watch Darkest Dungeon operate. Only focusing on the person with the most stress. Even though... I mean, look at this. This is Darkest Dungeon. Even though we got the drop on them. Dismiss missed... 
she did low damage. Guy's still alive. Got to act twice before we could act. There you go. Good job. So she's at 92 stress, which means it's very likely that we're going to get to see a resolve check. Uh, I'm going to shoot this guy. And uh, I'm going to stun him because he's already acted. So we can stun him. And then uh, let's just stun this guy. Now, remember when I came here, I was talking all um, deeply about synergizing with marking targets. But, um, you know, this early in the game, the fights just don't last long enough for that to be profitable. It's usually better, like, against a boss or some kind of more protracted fight that you're going to take a turn to mark and then reap the rewards. Uh, so, you know, I haven't really been able to showcase that at all. But we did get to see the Air Ballist in action, who is a great damage uh, dealer. Mm. I'm actually going to uh, grape... Sh no, I'm going to just hit this guy. The reason I'm doing this is because I want the Air Ballist to hit right here. She can't target the first target, so let's leave it for her to shoot. You kind of have to think about what your other people are going to do. And the Air Ballist can't hit the first slot. So don't. I, I was going to kill this with Dismiss. And I was like, you know what? That's going to be a waste. And then we'll just hit this guy. Well, <laughs> or not. <laughs> yep. Okay, good. Dodge for a dodge. And we're going to party heal. Good roll. And uh, I'm just going to slice... No bleed, but damage. And uh, I'm going to party heal again. A little bit greedy. Uh, but we got it. We'll blind fire. We got lucky. And we win. Whoa. We got a sapphire, which is worth a thousand. Beautiful. Four crests. Take it all. And that was it. But we're not going to go. We're going to continue adventuring because there's a chest right there. And, ooh, we got a scout. So this is interesting because we can see what's remaining. And there isn't really anything great. We could go check this curio, but we're going to get into two fights if we move on. So I think it's best for us to just um, out our torch and open the chest and use the key. Now, you see the key? It has this little, like, um, coins symbol under it, meaning this is the right item to use with this curio. We do it. And um, we got another key, some citrine, and some crests, and a journal page. Now, these journal pages, um, if you right-click on them, it's lore, and it will tell you a story as you piece them together. Once you take it back to your hamlet, you never need to get it again. I generally don't ever get these because they take up an inventory slot, and so they're the first thing I drop when I need space. But in this case, I can take it easily. And we'll click this. And we did it. That's right, room by room. So we got a bunch of crests, we got a, uh, a sensor, money. And we ended up getting um, eight crests, four busts, plus these three crests here. Um, and I'm realizing that uh, at some point, I got my signals crossed. I was supposed to do the mission that gave me deeds. I I talked about that as the right decision, and it was the right decision, but then I got distracted and, and picked the wrong mission. Uh, I went, so uh, we didn't get deeds, we got crests, but that's okay because um, we leveled the air ballist up, and oh, we got two positive quirks as well. Alright, so now we're back at the Hamlet, and even though I picked the wrong mission to give us the heirloom that we were looking for, it is okay. There are so many opportunities to get more. It's a good lesson to double check what mission you have selected. Uh, it's actually easy to kind of misclick that because if you come back to the Hamlet and then go back to embarking uh, or provisioning from the next screen, sometimes. Uh, 
it will have a different mission selected than you remember. So just pay attention to what you've got on. Now, uh, we have two new facilities unlocked, the guild and the blacksmith. Make no mistake, we will face ever greater threats. Our soldiers must be ready. Indeed. So from the guild, um, if I take, for example, Reynold, you just drag him over to this spot, and then you can see his abilities right here. Zealous Accusation, Smite, Stunning Blow, Bulwark of Faith, and they're all the abilities that he started with. Now, we cannot upgrade him at the moment because we need Instructor Mastery level one and so what that means is we click over here on the guild and you can see the instructor mastery is here but if we upgrade it here to level two um or i guess this is instructor mastery level one but it allows skills to upgrade to rank two so it's kind of confusing but anyway it's going to take six portraits and 14 crests to do this so remember how i said crests are the kind of heirloom you want for different facilities within your hamlet. Well, this is one of them. And I am going to click on this and upgrade it. And then we can also click on this uh, to upgrade the skill cost, reduce the skill cost by 10%. And right now it's not too much. It's 250, but of course 10% is always a good savings. And then the most important thing I want you to look at is that you can learn abilities that you do not yet have with your character and you can actually train them all if you wish and then select your loadout of four before the mission or within it so that you have the stuff that you're looking for now with a crusader i myself am not huge on bulwark of faith um it marks you and it gives you protection it's kind of like a taunt and it's okay but i much like prefer having the stun the double target damage the straight up smite for single target damage and then i really like holy lance this is one where you can only use holy lance if your crusader is in position three or four but sometimes enemies will shift you around and then when you get to do this it moves you forward and does a ton of damage. You know, it's a fantastic ability to move you forward. You get a huge uh, increase in chance to crit. And so I like the ability very much. So I could train it, but it is expensive. It's a thousand, right? So we might want to think about training regiment to bring that down to 900. But before I do that, okay, this is what you do in the guild. We can upgrade the skills that we like here. And notice that, like, for example, with smite, all right, it's accuracy base 85, it's 15% damage to unholy. And if I level it up, all right, it shows you on the tooltip the before and after. Its accuracy goes up, it gets a 1% increased chance to crit and does even more damage versus unholy. So that's beautiful, but the damage itself of the skill does not go off up in fact because that in general most of the time scales off of your weapon and your um trinkets and not from the skill itself so if you want to upgrade your weapons you need to go to the blacksmith the bellows blast once again the forge stands ready to make weapons of war it does and so i could drag reynold over and you see that we can't get him new weapons because we need weaponsmithing level one so again we're going to click on the blacksmith's upgrade screen and we need deeds to do this for both weaponsmithing and armorsmithing. In fact, deeds are incredibly important for many, many things that you'll need. It's kind of a bottleneck that I find early on in the game are deeds. And so we're going to need to be accumulating these as quickly as we can. It's not a huge deal that we can't upgrade our weapons or our armor right now. But we're going to want to, right? So... You can click on people over here, or you can drag them over uh, to select their weapons and armor and upgrade them. All right. So, first things first, let's go to the stagecoach and see who we can get. We can get a Plague Doctor, a Vestal, 
and a grave robber. And these are all fantastic, so we want them all. So I'm going to drag them all over. Than the blood -soaked battlefield. It's the best laboratory. All right, now I will say, um, if I wanted to lower the sanity of this character, I'd need to use um, the Abbey. And let's say I went in here. The sanitarium, by the way, what I was clicking on is for um, negative quirks that we want to get rid of. Like, this has become uh, quite bad, locked in place there. If I wanted to heal her, right, I could put her into this structure and take down her stress. But look how expensive this is. This is 1500 Okay? Remember... I have nothing invested in this character beyond the fact that I did level her up from zero to one. So, this is your choice, but for me, right here, um, I am going to leave this character here and probably kick them out of the group for when I get um, more people and need some space, because an herbalist isn't something that I'm like committed to where I have to have this type of character. They're, you know, very good, but I can get a different one. One that I don't have to ex uh, spend a whole bunch of money. I mean, I'm thinking, like, to cure all of her stress to make her usable again, we're talking, like, perhaps a few thousand, and that's a lot of my money. And you don't have to do this. If you like this character, if you want to keep them, feel free to use the tavern, you know, drop her in to the brothel or whatever and reduce her stress but I think it's very worthwhile to consider just kicking her out and saving your money for upgrading weapons and skills that's just me alright everybody uh, we've got the guild we've got the blacksmith we've got some targets we need deeds and we've completed our next level of dungeon we're up to 10 out of 13 characters and we're cooking with gas I think this is a good place to stop this second episode I want to say thank you so much for watching. Please post any questions or comments below, and I'd love to talk to you about the game. I hope you're finding this useful. Take care.